COVID cases hit a record high as revelers get ready for the big New Year's Eve gamble. Celebrations are going ahead in England, but not all are able to follow government advice to take a lateral flow test first. A hundreds, honestly, it, the amount of people that come in and call, it's hundreds of people looking to get them. Scotland takes a firmer line, quiet streets in its cities as Hogmanay is put on hold. In the US, thousands flee their homes in the worst wildfires in Colorado's history and... Fireworks mark the start of 2022 around the world in colourful but scaled back celebrations. is the ITV Evening News with Romilly Weeks. Good evening. As the UK prepares to ring in the new year, a record number of people will be doing so infected with COVID-19. The latest figures show more than two million of us had the virus as recently as Christmas. More will have it tonight and many won't know it, which is why Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland have imposed restrictions on tonight's partying. And in England, revellers are being urged to take a lateral flow test before going out, if they can find one. It's all against the backdrop of an increasingly stretched NHS with hospital admissions and staff absences continuing to rise. Our political correspondent Carl Dinnan has the latest. As people prepare to celebrate New Year, levels of infection in England are higher than at any other point during the pandemic. More than a dozen hospitals have closed their doors to visitors. But there's not yet been a corresponding surge in seriously ill patients and the government is holding off on new restrictions for England. Since we introduced Plan B, there hasn't been a need for any further restrictions. I think people have also responded very sensibly by being cautious, by accessing testing and by doing other sensible things to help to keep the virus at bay. And we will continue to monitor the data and keep it under review. The Office for National Statistics estimates 2.3 million people in the UK had the virus in the week ending 23rd of December, up nearly a million on the previous week. The highest infection levels were in London, where it's thought one in every 15 people had COVID, and the NHS in England suffered a 30% increase in staff absences to more than 24,000 by Boxing Day. And that's currently a bigger concern for trusts than patient numbers. They're most worried about the level of staff absences that they are seeing. That is putting real pressure on particular trusts. But clearly, we're still waiting to see if there are going to be large numbers of older people who are seriously ill with this variant. And that's why we're preparing uh, for the worst, but hoping for the best. But many people, including NHS staff, are struggling to get lateral flow tests, despite millions that were supposed to come to pharmacies this week nothing since Wednesday so we're still waiting hopefully we'll get delivery today but still no guarantee and you've been ordering them every day since yeah so we order them morning and evening still nothing and how many people a day do you think you're getting asking for lateral flow a hundred honestly it, the amount of people that come in and call it's hundreds of people looking to get them nearly two-thirds of UK adults have now had a booster jab and some in the health service are daring to hope that this wave might not prove as deadly as the last it won't be long before we find out. Carl Dinnan, ITV News. Nowhere is the New Year celebrated with more vigour than in Scotland, but this year's traditional Hogmanay festivities have been cancelled by the Covid surge. Crowds at outdoor events must not exceed 500 and people have been urged to stay at home instead. From Edinburgh, our Scotland correspondent Peter Smith reports. Uh, right, let's get this back into position. Hogman A is meant to be about bringing friends and family together. Instead, this year's preparations in Scotland are about keeping people apart, one metre apart to be precise, and there's no dancing or drinking while standing up aloud. The effects on hospitality are clear to see. So if you were to come in here just before the pandemic um, for Hogman A, you'd probably see about 1,000 people uh, standing in this courtyard right now. But as you can see, we've got one table in. In the flats right above you there, yeah. no limits in the number of people who can gather and no Absolutely. distancing. And, and I think that's what's going to happen because, uh, you know, uh, all these revellers then, then they won't necessarily want to come out and just have a sit-down drink um, with only three households when they can go to a, a house party and there could be 20, 30 people from 
many different households with no restrictions and no safety measures and no sterilisation of areas. So uh, that doesn't make sense. It's not just house parties where Scots can go to avoid restrictions. Some are fleeing to England. So we'll have to go to Blackpool to have a good time. For us. In Newcastle tonight, there are a few more Scottish accents. Unfortunately, we can't uh, go out in Scotland, so we've had to come down to England to go out to the nightclubs for New Year's. Edinburgh's Hogmanay is world-renowned for the fireworks over a castle and thousands on the streets singing Old Lang Syne and holding hands with strangers. You won't be seeing much of that here this year because in Scotland's capital, the streets are much quieter and much like the rest of the country, there is a familiar hope that next year things will be better. Peter Smith, ITV News, Edinburgh. London has set a grim new record just before the turn of the year. Two teenagers stabbed to death in separate incidents means that 30 teens have now been murdered in 2021. The previous worst year was 2008, when 29 young people were killed. Vincent McAvinney has been to one scene in West London and sent this report. Well, police have spent the day here in Hillingdon in West London making inquiries in this area where a 16-year-old boy was tragically stabbed to death last night. We've seen forensic officers pulling up the drains and looking in bushes for evidence. The boy has not yet been named, but we've been told that police and paramedics treated him at the scene, but sadly he was pronounced dead here. Meanwhile, in Croydon, in South London, in a park, a 15-year-old boy was also stabbed. He was treated by police and then paramedics, but then sadly died at the scene. Both victims' families have been told they're being supported by specialist officers. The Met Police are encouraging London parents to speak to their children about the dangers of carrying knives. They have now opened two murder investigations and so far made no arrests. The killers of Arthur Labino Hughes have had their jail sentences referred to the Court of Appeal for being too lenient. The six-year-old died after being beaten, starved and poisoned with salt. His stepmother, Emma Tustin, was sentenced to 29 years for his murder. His father, Thomas Hughes, got 21 years for manslaughter. And police have found a second body two weeks after a fire destroyed a block of flats in Reading. The victim is yet to be recovered due to fears over the building's safety. The U.S. state of Colorado is battling what officials have called the worst wildfires in its history. 100-mile-an-hour winds are driving the flames, destroying hundreds of homes and forcing tens of thousands to evacuate. Our correspondent Robert Moore reports from the United States. For residents in northern Colorado, this was an end-of-year nightmare. A wildfire that moved with frightening speed. Only in a few places did firefighters even try and battle the blaze. By day, the reason for the rapid spread became clear. I would imagine this is what a nuclear attack would look like. It's just black and windy and there's embers blowing and, I mean, coming over your car and it was just like, where am I? The wind was howling, gusting at times at over 100 miles per hour and over a parched landscape as well. The speed meant that evacuations became a life and death run for it. For those leaving shops and stepping out into this apocalyptic looking scene, you can see why. The severe drought in Colorado has meant this landscape was deeply vulnerable to a wildfire, even at this time of year. And there is now a state of emergency in place. As the governor warns residents they are facing an enemy, he simply called a force of nature. Robert Moore, ITV News, Washington. Here, the UK had the warmest New Year's Eve on record today. The Met Office says the temperature reached 15.3 degrees in Coningsby, Lincolnshire, beating the previous mark of 14.8 from 2011. Meanwhile, while our countdown continues, around the world, the New Year has already begun.
in Hong Kong. The Philharmonic Orchestra played in 2022 with a live performance over the countdown display and fireworks. Children performed on stage in Pyongyang in North Korea. And in Sydney, the traditional fireworks show burst over the Harbour Bridge and the Opera House. And that's it for now. I'm back with the late news and the countdown to New Year from a quarter to midnight.